Wow, it's been a while. We finally have a video out. This time we're gonna be playing Pokemon Emerald Rogue. Basically, if you combine a rogue like any Pokemon game, you get Pokemon Emerald Rogue. Once a Pokemon faints, you can no longer use it, and we have 8 gym leaders to beat, 4 elite 4 members, 1 champion, and 1 final boss without losing, so we have to stay alive throughout the entire journey. And the trainer is gonna have access to legendary Pokemon, but we do as well, so it's not that big a deal. I'm not a fan of difficult Pokemon games, so we're gonna put the settings on easy because I just want to have a cool little fun time. We go to the lab and pick a starter and we pick Sneasel over Vulpix and Rattata. We head in for our adventure and choose the second lowest path. In our first area we immediately find a Larvitar and add it to the team. If we get Brawly as our first gym, we are definitely gonna lose but you know, we move on. We got a special encounter Barboach with Dragon Dance as we head for our first gym fight. Luckily for us, we got Norman, so we got saved and we're not gonna lose, at least I hope. He leaves with his Chainsey as I lead with my Barboach. I go for a Dragon Dance, increasing my stats. I go for a Nug Dragon Dance and I go for a Waterfall, taking down the Chainsey. Out comes the Fert, but the Fert takes me down with a couple of Fury Swipes, so I immediately lose my Barboach. Nevertheless, Sneasel comes out to finish the Ferret, and last Pokemon is Skitty. With two hits, the Skitty is taken down by my Sneasel as we get our first Gym Badge. Our next path is the second highest one where we can catch an Elekid on the first area. We got a nice little team forming, obviously Brawly is still a problem but there's plenty of Pokemon to catch to counteract that. We have another strong encounter and out of goddamn nowhere we got a Mewtwo. Well, I guess Brawly ain't a problem no more, if we can catch it that is. We caught it with a Pokeball. Hey, I'ma take it. We finish the route off and face off with Watson for our second gym badge. We got Watson up next, he leads with an Elekid while we lead with our Mewtwo. We go for a Confusion and with two Confusions we take down the Elekid. We are paralyzed though, Chinchou comes out and confuses us. We take down the Chinchou easily. The Pokemon next up is Pikachu. After a little bit of confusion, it goes down as well. Voltorb is up next and I'm pretty afraid that it has self-destruct. I go for Future Sight so I can get some future damage on it and go for Confusion. I get paralyzed so I can attack it. It goes for Electro Ball again leaving me with 30 health and the Future Sight takes on the Voltorb, defeating Watson and getting our second Gym Badge. We march forward and while on an icy path, we catch a trap inch which we can turn into a strong Flygon if needed. We also battle some random strangers and get Larvitar to evolve into Pupitar. At this point, while Brawly isn't much of a threat anymore, Juan definitely is as trap inch and Pupitar would not be a threat anymore. To answer our prayers, literally our next strong encounter is Zapdos to counter Juan's water types. We have some unreal luck on this run. We catch it and add it to the team. Trap Edge also evolves into a Vibrava as we challenge the next gym leader, Flannery, for our third gym badge. Flannery starts with Combuscan, which is a good for us because Mewtwo can just confusion it out of the way. Next Pokemon is Charmeleon, and I go for two confusions, taking down the Charmeleon. Out comes Magmar, and it confuses us, but after a couple of confusions, we are able to take down the Magmar, but Mewtwo is now in yellow hell, which is pretty risky. I go for Confusion because I'm not really worried about Slugma taking down the Mewtwo as we sweep Flannery with our Mewtwo gaining our third gym badge. Now with Zapdos on the team, Elekid isn't really useful anymore so we decide to use it as fodder and discard of it. We also evolve our Vibrava into a Flygon as well. The route to the next gym is really uneventful. The only major change is that Mewtwo knows Ice Beam for coverage. Next gym leader ends up being Roxanne. Roxanne leads with her Aerodactyl as I lead with my Mewtwo. I go for Ice Beam taking it out. The next Pokemon is Shuckle. I go for Future Sight as I switch into my Flygon so I can get a very strong Earthquake off. I click my Earthquake and take down the Shuckle. Future Sight hits the Armor Star, doesn't really kill it. It protects for a while, but Earthquake will eventually take it down. Earthquake also takes down the Pupitar as the last Pokemon is Armaldo. Two Earthquakes is enough to take down the Armaldo as we get our fourth Gym Badge. We power our way towards the next Gym Leader. 
I decide to add Swallow to my team to round out the team, but ideally I do want to get a strong fire type if possible. We also get Pupitar to evolve into Tyranitar to buff the team. Another strong encounter and this time we get a Moltres, which is a strong fire type which I would have loved to add to the team, but I accidentally killed it. Not a big issue though as the next gym leader is Liza, so Moltres wouldn't be good against it anyway. We challenge Liza to a battle as she leads with her Claydol. I use Crunch to take it down and out comes the Metagross. I go for Earthquake and a second one does finish it off but I am in yellow health now. I decide to go for a Crunch taking down the Slowbro in two hits. Slowbro goes for Rain Dead for some reason so it could have finished this off but it didn't. I decide to switch into my Swallow to take an attack from the Executor and take it out with Brave Bird. The last Pokemon is Starmie. I go for A Slash, hoping for the flinch, but I don't get it, and my Swallow goes down. Out comes my Zapdos, and I go for a Discharge, taking down Liza, getting our fifth Gym Badge. On my quest for a Fire type, I discover Growlithe, which I add to the team. As we move forward, I realize Sneasel is a liability as it couldn't evolve. To replace it, I conveniently get Lapras in a rock like area, which is pretty weird, but you know, we move on. And it also could be a crucial Pokemon against Drake and his Dragon type, so I was really excited to add it to the team. We can't look too far ahead though, as in front of us now is Brawly for our 6th Gym Badge. Brawly leads with his Heracross while I lead with my Mewtwo. I only have 3 Psychic PP, so I'm able to take down the Heracross, the Breloom, but not the Hitmonchan. I've used Future Sight so I can take it down in 2 turns, but I do have to recover so I can preserve my health. I go for Future Sight again and just bam recover so I can recover my HP. Future Sight takes down the Polyrath. Out comes Medichan and I decide and ponder what to do because it is part Psychic type. So I decide to use Future Sight anyway because Mewtwo has really high stats and it does take down the Medicham and we end up getting our 6th Gym Badge. Next up, I come to a conclusion that Growlithe could be pointless as the next trainers include Juan, Wallace, Steven, which really undermines the viability of a fire type. I replace it with Sceptile as we move forward. We get another strong encounter, this time it would be a Lugia. I do decide to catch it to replace Lapras because its stats are clearly better. Lapras goes down anyway, so not like I had a choice in the matter. As predicted, the next gym was indeed one. I lead with my Sceptile while he leads with his Seeking. I go for a Leaf Storm, taking down the Seeking in one hit. Out comes the Gyarados and I switch into my Zapdos to go for a Discharge taking it down. Discharge also takes down the Kingler, Crawdon and Blastoise in 2 hits. Out comes the Starmie and I take it down in 1 Discharge and get my 7 Gym Badge easily. Next up was a highly uneventful path. Only major thing was that I found a Suicune and preferred its typing over Lugia's typing. I replaced Lugia with Suicune as we arrive at our last gym leader which is none other than Winona. I lead with my Zapdos thinking it's gonna be something electric type it's gonna be good against but Salamence comes out, I paralyze it so it couldn't move and two ancient powers later the Salamence does go down. Rayquaza is up next, the ancient gym leader has a Rayquaza which is pretty scary. We, we do decent enough damage with ancient power but our rage brings us the yellow health so we decide to switch into our Mewtwo tank and our rage and go for an ice beam we are faster so we take it down beautifly and butterfree are easy pokemon to take down her second last pokemon is a skarmory so i decide to bring out my tyranitar and go for a rock slide a couple rock slide later it goes down last pokemon is zapdos i go for a rock slide it is in red health and a second rock slide does take it out and we get our last gym badge we waste no time and face our first elite foe member drake I lead with my Zapdos and a similar situation to Winona happens, I take down the Salamence with Asian power, Flygon comes out and I just quickly spare my Asian power hoping to get an Omni boost. I do get one Omni boost though and take it down with a Drill Peck, out comes Rayquaza and I'm in a similar position as I was with Winona, so I switch into my Mewtwo, take a Hyper Beam and go for Ice Beam to take down the Rayquaza. Out comes Latios which also goes down after a couple of Ice Beams. Out comes Dragonite and it also goes down after two Ice Beams. Next up is Latias which tanks the Ice Beam pretty well so I just keep on spamming my Ice Beam and another Ice Beam 
indeed ends up taking out the Eladias and we beat Drake pretty easily. We immediately move forward to the next Elite Four fight, which is Sydney. He leads with his Sneasel while I lead with my Tyranitar. Tyranitar takes down the Sneasel with a Rock Slide as Umbreon comes out. I spam Earthquake while it spams Moonlight, healing itself out. After a couple of turns, Umbreon does go down, and next Pokemon up is Cacturn. I switch into my Zapdos to take an Energy Ball and then go for Drill Pack, taking it out. His next Pokemon is his Tyranitar, so I decide to switch into my Sceptile, but get immediately one shot. So I then decide to switch into my Flygon and go for an Earthquake, taking it out. Out comes the Stableye, and I go for a couple of Earthquakes, taking down the Stableye as well. Last Pokemon is Houndoom, and I take it down with an Earthquake as well, defeating Sydney. But now, we are at a bit of a predicament because Sceptile is now taken down, so we need to replace it. To add insult to injury, I lost Tyranitar to a Registeel, which hurts a lot. I decide to add a Swallow to the team to make up some team space, but again tragedy struck as I lost my Flygon carelessly. To make it this far and be on the brink of losing the run was painful and added a lot of pressure on what needed to be done next, but I knew I had to push on. We caught a Forretress and a Registeel to round up the team and we went on to face the next Elite Four member Glacia. Glacia leaves with her Cloyster while I lead with my Suicune. I calm mind up raising my special attack against special defense and then go for extra sensory taking down the Cloyster and the following Pulliswine into hit. Out comes the Articuno and I go for extra sensory taking it down in 3 hits and out comes the Jinx, I go for Surf taking it out in 1 hit, out comes the Dugon, I knew it would be bulky so I combined it up again and went for an extra sensory taking it down in 2 hits, out comes the Lapras and 3 extra sensory takes it down and we defeat Glacia in a epic sweep. We went to the Pokemon lab next and had to pick from 3 of our dead Pokemon to revive. The obvious choice was Tyranitar as I welcomed it back to the team replacing Ferretris. Along with Tyranitar we acquired a Catching Curse which lowers our chance to catch Pokemon by 25% so we do have to be mindful of that. Phoebe up next though. Phoebe leads for Bayonet as I lead with my Suicune. I decided to go for a similar strategy as I did with Glacia by setting up Calm Minds and taking down her Pokemon with Surf. I take down the Bayonet with Surf and Sableye with Surf as well. Shedinja comes out and I realize I cannot take down Shedinja because it has the ability Wonder Guard. I switch into my Zapdos and go for a Drill Pack after taking a Shadow Force. Shedinja goes down and out comes the Misdreavus. I go for Discharge taking it down into hits. Out comes the Gengar and I decide I switch into my Registeel so I can go for a lock on Zap Cannon so I can guarantee a paralysis on it as well. Gengar shows me that it has Destiny Bond so I'm really afraid to take it down with my Registeel so I decide I have a really good idea. I switch into my Tyranitar and spam Sandstorm so that I can take down the Gengar with Sandstorm damage which was a pretty good idea on my part because it was really effective and make sure none of my Pokemon went down due to Sandstorm or due to Destiny Bond. I take down the Dust Club with Crunch and easily finish off the battle. Before the champion fight though, I decided to catch a Heracross to replace my Swallow because Heracross is a good type because of its fighting type so I can take down any Ice types that Wallace has or any Rock types that Steven might have. I do end up catching it despite the catching curse and added to my team. Up next is the champion fight as he leads with his Pelipper while I lead with my Zapdos. I go for a discharge taking it down, out comes the Kyogre and I take down the Kyogre with 2 discharges. Tentacruel also goes down with 2 discharges and out comes Azumarill which also goes down in 2 discharges. Gyarados goes down in 1 discharge and so does Love Disc and we beat the champion fight fairly easily but there is one more trainer that we have to face one secret boss and that is Steven Stone. Now is the final fight of this Pokemon Emerald Rogue run against Steven Stone. He leads with his Mawile while I lead with my Suicune. I set up Calm Minds because this Mawile can't really do that much damage against me. So I set it up until I have max special attack and take down the Mawile with a Surf. Mewtwo also goes down with two Surfs and out comes the Jirachi which also goes down with Surf. 
so does the aggro and so does the metagross skarmory also with two serves go down and with that we defeat steven stone and effectively beat a pokemon emerald rogue run if you guys enjoyed that journey please leave a like and subscribe if you wish i had a lot of fun playing through this game and making this video we have this lovely team of legendary pokemon zapdos suicune mewtwo Heracross in late edition, I didn't really use it that much. Registeel and last but not least, our Tyranitar which we brought back from the dead. So this is our Hall of Fame team. We have a lot of Pokemon that helped us along the way such as Sceptile and our Sneasel. Make sure to leave a like as I already said previously and next week I'll have another video out hopefully. And yeah, see ya, bye.